What's up everybody? Mr. Thrasher here. Today, we're doing something a little different and it's gonna be kind of the start of something different for this channel because, oh, this car hits me. I am going to be velging into some true crime, some murders and other things that have taken place in this area. There's nobody else in YouTube, on YouTube who works the Ottawa area. So we got Scott on tape in Toronto. We've got people all over the states, but we do not have anybody here in Ottawa covering this stuff. And there's quite a bit right here in this vicinity, not too far away from my neck of the woods. So today we're going to talk about something interesting. This will be the first. So welcome everybody to the very first of my true crime type vids or episodes. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm being disrespectful in any way. Anything that I say in these are as far to the truth as I can have it. I would never make up anything. Uh, no disrespect to any of the people or families involved. And there's always a, a large number of different opinions that you'll get on doing this stuff. So I mean the utmost respect as I do this stuff. So hopefully you guys are into it and hopefully it teaches you a little bit something and I'll be learning as well. Let's park over here. Columbus Moo, spelled K-O-L-U-M-B-U-S, was a 31-year-old refugee from Burma, Myanmar. He was a refugee who met his wife, Dina Na, at a camp in Thailand in 1995. They both met and they moved to Canada, right here, 1995, and got married soon after. This was the apartment building they moved to. Right after coming to Canada and getting married, Columbus worked for Nortel as a laser engineer, and she worked for a local technology company. Columbus never got along with Dina's parents. Eventually, they ended up having to move in here because of financial difficulties. These are not very big apartments and I could see how something like that could upset somebody, but who knew where this was going to go? So to, to these very small two bedroom apartments where one bedroom is even smaller, her parents had moved in. Columbus really didn't agree with all this and it was hard for him to deal with. Here's what the parking lot building looks like. Not exactly sure which apartment this crime took place in, but it was, was the building. On any normal day, they probably came home from work, parked in one of these spots and entered the building that way, as most do. People who knew the couple or worked with either of them said that they were a loving couple, never quarreled, never fought, planned on having children, and creating more of a family. Columbus Moo did not get along with Dina's parents, and things started to escalate. Very trippy rainbow puddle here in the parking lot. Sorry distracted me a bit. Financial troubles arose. And Columbus and Dina weren't getting along as well as they once had. And this was mostly because of her parents living with him, which had to happen. She was helping out her parents and he really didn't uh, see it that way. Or perhaps he did, he just couldn't help not get along with them. An argument had ensued when Columbus and his wife Dina were making supper. Issues were arising financially, arguments were ensuing based around her parents living with them and the fact that he didn't get along with them. It was around supper time, he was using what is called a mortar. Now a mortar, 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 if you're wondering what that is, there's kind of differences. Some of it is used in masonry, it's the stuff that holds the stone together and everything. But you can also have what they call a mortar, it can be made out of stone, cement, any of that. And it's used for mixing stuff and he was doing something like that for supper. Mixing stuff up, 
an argument had ensued and he struck her several times in the back of the head, bludgeoning her and she fell bleeding and unconscious into the living room. It is then that the neighbor found out what was going on and Columbus was arrested right in the hall and taken out of here. The weapon used was used in the newspaper as a kitchen implement. It's actually a 4.5 pound mortar that fractured her skull. After he struck her, newspapers say several times. Something else I read said two, but I think the more correct number was three or four. In court, they had tried to uh, tried to save <laughs> Moo by saying maybe he wasn't mentally stable when this occurred, but. They had him evaluated and he was mentally stable. They concluded that he was calm, cool, and collected at the time of the crime. Mu was arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment for second degree murder. Is it first or second degree? I believe it said second degree, but I don't know what isn't first degree about that. I feel really bad for her parents especially not didn't get the info if they were in the apartment when this happened but was one of these apartments coming out of a court case Columbus Moo would actually wave to a group of friends from Nortel who were attending the hearing on his way to rot in his cell Columbus Moo was charged with second degree murder and sentenced to life in prison <clears throat> but could be would be up for parole after 12 years to me that makes no sense you bludgeoned a woman he hit her multiple times in the back of the skull fracturing it and she laid bleeding on the floor and somehow made it to the hospital but was dead by the following day <sighs> I don't agree with anything else, and I don't take any joy out of doing something like this but I do want to do more of these true crime things because they're intriguing. People like to be notified. And it's important to know the history of things like this, especially if you live in a building like that. Thought about asking some of the people uh, which floor or apartment it was because you cannot find that info anywhere. Obviously, they don't want people going up there and looking for the exact apartment. Oh, this is where it happened. I would like to for this video show you so I thought about asking a few people what they know I could not retrieve info no find nor find any pictures on the court case itself the trial or any pictures of Columbus Moo not that we want to see a picture of him anyway um, I hope he never gets paroled and he doesn't deserve parole and he doesn't deserve say the death chair either sometimes I'd be quick to say oh they should just put him to death but Truthfully, uh, a better punishment is to sit in a cell with nothing, rot, and think of the crime you've committed. And pay for it the hardest way, by dealing with yourself for the rest of your days. Here's the building from the left side. Could have really been any one of these apartments that you see. like there's eight floors seven seven floors trying to kind of cover all angles let's get the idea of where this could have taken place senseless useless brutal crimes such as this are not glorified especially not on my channel but it's informative it's got a sense of intriguement that's even a word it's intriguing and uh, well this occurred on September 7th 2001 which means it was just over 20 years ago couldn't find anybody who had covered this and I'd like to do quite a few more of these but I want to do it in good taste and I mean the utmost respect to the victims and their families thank you very much
for watching. And I hope it's informed you about something. There's much more to come on this stuff. Not changing anything up. I'm still going to do everything I usually do on the channel, but bring some more facts into the channel. People who are into true crime and stuff. And, uh, so, she was actually rushed to the hospital after being struck several times. She lay bleeding on the living room floor, and after the ambulance had rushed her, he was arrested in the front, and they rushed her to the hospital. And she died over the next 48 hours. It's a pretty nice area. This is a daycare center or a school for smaller children, right next to the building in which this murder took place. But I guess it could, could have taken place in any of these buildings or any house or even in the school. Usually when things like this happen, it's uh, there's a lot of factors at play. And uh, perfect ingredients for a storm, if you will. But yeah, it's like innocent children play here all the time. It's, it's fairly nice, this part of the area, but a lot of people might know that this brutal crime took place right here, 58 Bayshore. A man who kills a woman, no matter what purpose, and her parents were there, deserves no parole. As far as I know, he's still imprisoned. Thank God. This is the building, and it occurred in, right here. Killed her with a mortar. Now I'll take you around front, show you the front of the building, which is where he would have come out her body would have been stretchered out into the ambulance right in the front and uh, he was also arrested <clears throat> in the hallway I'm pretty sure it was not the first floor because I heard that he had to come down I, I read that at some point but still no info on the floor number or the room number which I think is pretty common when it comes to apartment uh, murders Here's the side of the building here. And I would like to say rest in peace and I hope that Dina Na finds some peace up there. Uh, I'm really sorry that this had to happen to anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. Do not condone murder. Could he have been mentally well? Columbus Moo? I don't think so. But now he'll serve out probably the rest of his life in prison, considering the blatant crime he committed. All the evidence is right there. Even the motive. It's coming around the front of the building now. 58 Bayshore is where this occurred on one of these floors. Could have been right here on the first floor. We don't know for sure. I don't think it was the first floor though. This building's called the Opal. So someone's living in an apartment where a woman was murdered. Innocent woman was murdered because of her deranged husband. Like I said, I hope she finds a little peace and that's just, just not something I enjoy about doing this. Uh, I enjoy the intriguement of it, which is why I think I'm going to do quite a few of these true crime videos and there's a lot very close to where I'm dwelling, which kind of freaks me out. Freaks me out a little bit, but... Very building, a woman was bludgeoned to death. And then these were the doors that he came out with the police, of course, but she was also stretchered out in the ambulance. We rushed to the hospital after that. Not sure what her parents did after that. Maybe they continued staying in the apartment. I don't know. But there you go. 58 Bayshore. The Opal is where Columbus Moo murdered his wife, Dina Na. Awful stuff.
So yeah, I'm gonna do more of these. Because hey, maybe you didn't know about this. Not everybody does. I didn't until a couple days ago. I thought, wow, there's a lot of things I can research and cover right here that are very intriguing, very informative, both to you and me. So, teaching each other here on the Mr. Thrasher Show. Remember to like, remember to subscribe. If I do find any more info on this, I'll, I'll stick it in at the end of the video. Remember to like, remember to subscribe. Not always doing this. Don't know what you're missing on the Mr. Thrasher Show unless you tune in. Rest in peace, Dina Naw. We'll see you all soon, all right? Mr. Thrash. Here's a photo of Dina Naw. I was able to find a graduation photo here. She was born March 24th, 1971, and passed on September 9th, two days after the incident. <clears throat> I could find no pictures of Columbus Moo. Not that it matters. No one who commits such a crime should ever be memorialized in any way. We don't need to look at a picture of him. This is the kind soul we need to remember. Rest in peace to her. And, uh, yeah. I hope she finds some peace up there. I found an obituary for Adina Naw. There's a little, oh, they actually made, I think, a little mistake. They said she was born March 24th, 1961, but that would have made her 41, and she passed at the age of 31. Uh, it says, Dear Lou, it's been 15 years now. Not a day passes without remembering you. You're always in our hearts. Memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. And so will Moo. Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All at home. Rest in peace to Dean and Na. Thanks again, everybody.